Okay, continuing on our slice, we are going to be calculating relative frequencies from a contingency table. And so, let's see what we have here. A survey of a sample of 253 people is conducted. Now, the survey's respondents are classified according to their political affili affiliation and their opinion on a particular bill. The results are given in the table below. So, let's take a look at this. We got our political affiliation. We have some Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. And then, on this particular bill, we've got the those in favor of it, those opposed to it, and those who are indifferent. And so, all of this information is presented here in this table. And let's see what it is we want. Now, it says among all the respondents. That's important right there. Among all the respondents. That means that when we talk about getting a relative frequency, once again, a relative frequency, that's just another name for a fraction expressed as a decimal. So a relative frequency, make a note here, a relative frequency is simply a fraction expressed as a decimal again. And we've seen that before. And so let's just make that note here. A relative frequency is just another way to say a fraction expressed as a decimal. Well, of course, if we're going to have this fraction, we have to have the denominator to our fraction. This is where we have to be careful because this changes lots of times as we work on our problems here. So we're going to have to have a fraction. And this fraction then is going to be always the total that we're talking about. Now, sometimes we're talking about the entire sample. And in this case, we are, but that is not always true. We have to read this carefully. It says, among all the respondents, but notice that there are 253 respondents altogether in our sample. So, in fact, in this case, but not in every case, we are going to have a uh, fraction with 253 on the bottom. So that is out of all of those, but read carefully, because sometimes that's not the situation. But it is here, so let's read on. Among all respondents, what is the relative frequency of those who are Democrat and they're in favor of the bill? So we look up here and say, okay, here's your Democrats here. All of these are Democrats. Okay, and all of these are in favor of the bill, but only the 22 are Democrats and in favor of the bill, where these two intersect right here is what we're interested in. This is what we care about. This is what we consider success. And so this is going to go to the top of our fraction. So let's go over here now and uh, let's put that 22 on the top of our fraction. So we're going to have the fraction 22 over 253. So let's use our calculator to turn that into a decimal. We'll simply take the top, divide that by the bottom, and we are going to get this decimal. And so let's uh, write some of this down. We're going to get 0 0.0865 and some other decimals out here. Let's pay attention though to what Alex wants. We want this rounded to two decimal places, or at least two. But let's go with two and uh, see what we get into here. So on our second decimal place, notice that that is an eight. The digit that's in the third place is a six. That's going to cause us to round up. And so what we're going to do is add one here in the uh, hundreds place. So we're going to get the decimal 0 0.09. Let's give that to Alex and see if that would make him happy. And it does. Let's do another one. Let's do another one here. Uh, I'd like to show you one that doesn't work out quite as easily. Let's read this. A sample of 173 individuals is selected. The individuals are classified according to their smoking habits and the smoking habits of their parents. The results are shown below. Okay, so we see that. Well, here's an individual. Uh, here's the individuals who smoke. Here's all the individuals who don't smoke. Now, here's a situation where both of their parents smoke, 
only one parent smokes and neither parent smokes. Okay, so we got all that and say, well, that's nice. What are we doing? Well, read the story. Among the individuals in the sample who smoke, okay, now this is key text here. Because in the last example, we immediately made our fraction with this total, 1C3, or the number that was in the same spot. We put that on the bottom, but not so here. Because we're not talking about the entire group of 173 now. We're talking about only the individuals who smoke. See that? the individuals who smoke. So let's go up here and see what we've got there. Well, the individuals who smoke are all of the ones in this line. So what we're going to need to do then is to add up those three values. So I'm going to grab for my calculator and I'm going to add those up. So the 33 plus the 22 plus the 16 is 71. So that is the entire group that I am talking about, which means that that is going to be the bottom of my fraction. So I'm going to only be looking at the, uh, the possibility here of having that group of 71 as my total sample size. Let's go back over here and see what else we got. Among the individuals in a sample who smoke, in other words, we got the smokers on the bottom, what is the relative frequency of individuals who have two parents who do not smoke? Okay, two parents who do not smoke. In other words, that's the same basic meaning as neither parent smokes. So we go down here and we find neither parent smokes. That'd be here. But notice that this is the one which is in the smoker's column because we're only considering these for our total group. So it's like everything else is blocked out. So we want this 16 right there to be the top of our fraction uh, because those are the ones who have two parents who do not smoke. So back over here then, what we will do is we will put our 16 there and what we'll have to do is to take that 16 over 71. So 16 divided by 71, make that fraction into a decimal. Notice that we get this complicated decimal point, 2, 2, 5, and so on. Uh, let's see now what it is that Alex wants out of that. They want two decimal places. So if we pop back over here and look in the second decimal place, we'll see that second spot is a 2. The digit after that's a 5, so that's going to round that up. So we are going to get 0 0.23. And so let's put that in for our answer. 0.23 and Alex is happy